who's up for some Lies of P? Yeah? This is the Souls-like Pinocchio game. And that's a beating heart. Um, yeah, so basically we're looking at a very, very Bloodborne-inspired Souls-like based on the sort of characters and, and the worlds and the tales and adventures of Pinocchio. Interesting. In honour of the great writer Carlo Collodi, who I believe is the author of the adventures of Pinocchio. So, I have played through the game. Not all the way. Um, so I'm going to keep part of our little Let's Play series um, fresh. I've got to be honest with you guys. I'm, I'm having just complete bipolar sort of chalk and cheese, hot and cold opinions of the game. I mean, it looks decent enough. I mean, it looks all right. I'm playing on PC, but, you know, I'm sure it's great on consoles as well. Um, it just... It feels a little unpolished, not quite refined, and I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's derivative of something like Bloodborne or other From Software games. It's heavily inspired by them, for sure. Um, but it, it's honestly, I think as we play through, I want you guys in the comments as well, just start letting me know what you think. Have you played it? Are you interested in playing it? I mean, I'm, and as we go through, tell me if you think I'm being a bit unfair. And certainly highlight where... My frustrations are, you know, misplaced, and it's actually just, you know, not the game, it's me not being... It's good. <laughs> but we start off, and you get to choose a sort of base class, but again, I think it's pretty loose, just like a From Software game is. So, Path of the Cricket, Path of the Bastard, and Path of the Sweeper. If I hit Triangle here, um, you get a very Souls-like screen of stats. Um, vitality, Vigor, Capacity, Mode activity technique and advance so i believe cap i believe um motivity and technique are like strength and dex advance i think is like sort of consumables um if there is any sort of magic type stuff or boosting kind of um buffs that you have capacity is obviously your weight load uh, vigor is your stamina and vitality is health um Interesting. It's an interesting game, but as you can see here, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the path of the cricket. I like the sort of balance of this. It comes with a saber as well. Now, if you have a little look there, puppet saber and puppet saber handle. Your weapon is split into two. And if you look at the bottom right when this little cutscene ends, you'll see that I have skills from the blade of the saber and also the hilt on the handle as well. And they need. They use energy. I think they use what's called Fable. I believe it's called Fable. And if you look up where my health and stamina are, you'll see three little bars. And that, um, that builds up from attacking. Again, you know, R1 fast attacks, R2 heavy attacks. <clears throat> if you circle behind an enemy, you get the backstab. We have the quick step. Um, like Bloodborne, when you're locked on, when you're in combat, when you're not, it's just a roll. You hold circle, you sprint, and you can click the left stick in for the sort of Dark Souls type jump. Which is quite nice. <clears throat> but I, I just I don't know how I'm feeling about the game. Coming straight from Elden Ring, I felt like I was being a bit too critical when I was forming my opinion of it yesterday as I played through. Um, but it, it just has that sort of feeling of not quite fine. And it is a demo, so maybe it'll get better. Um, Pulse cell. So your pulse cell, that's essentially your Estus flask there on the left, you see. Um, you can use that to heal. And then when it, you run out, you can actually replenish the flasks just by attacking enemies. I mean, you have to attack quite a few times to get one to replenish, but... Um, but it can be done, which is kind of a nice option, I suppose. <clears throat> so, for example, that critical backstab, that critical hit, it doesn't feel like doesn't feel meaty. You know when you play a From Software game, you feel that visceral attack or that backstab or that critical or that parry and riposte. Um, the tutorial there was just telling me that if I hold down... I, I have PC inputs being shown, but um, I'm just going to talk as it's my PS5 controller. If you hold down X, you'll get your bag. So on the left there, you'll see a slots for other things. And if you just up and down on the D-pad there, you can switch between the items that you have in each slot. And then if you're in the down slot and there's another item to the side, you just hit down again to cycle through. 
and then the same in the top slot you would just hit up to cycle through um as you can see we've got a prosthetic the left arm is prosthetic so these are basically uh, the same as sekiro so if you imagine the prosthetic in sekiro you can basically equip different abilities to the arm um we'll get in a second let me just dodge this guy again it just feels a little janky it doesn't feel quite smooth enough um I got hit. How do you, sir? That's just bad stamina management. I uh, shouldn't have tried rolling around him on the stairs, really. Um, the first time I came here, I was quite proud because I sort of lo I looked here and saw him. And I was like, mate, I'm a From Software trained gamer. Like, you can't ambush me, all right? <laughs> but uh, as I played through um, other areas of the demo, I did get ambushed a few times. Um, and I will say this, the demo is bigger than I thought. So, like... I stopped playing about 11 o'clock last night and I was just like, Oof, there you go, uh, that'll do. <laughs> so I think for this episode, our sort of first mission is to get out of this train station. And then the mission becomes um, getting to Hotel Krat. And from what I understand of the hotel, of what I've seen of it so far, it's like the Firelink Shrine in Dark Souls. It's essentially, to be against the, the forgotten, um, the round table hold, sorry, um, in Elden Ring. It's like a, like a hub sort of area which um, has certain amenities available to you when you first get there, and it looks like you unlock more. So that's, that's like a really nice anchor. There's, I love stuff like that. I love being able to sort of, um, you know, have my base camp, you know, load out, get battle ready, and then get out into the world to take down enemies and bosses. Um, so, so far, I'm just spamming R1. There is a perfect parry. As you can see, I can't do it. Um... I will try to show you that at some point. But I just found it to be completely unrewarding. Like, there didn't seem to be any... Enemies were barely staggered from it. And I couldn't see any opportunity to um, get, like, a riposte or anything. Or get a powerful enough attack in. And finding spamming R1, like, just to be the most effective. <clears throat> Again, this is just telling us about typical um, doors that don't open from one side and do open from another to create shortcuts. And then you've got ladders as well, which can be dropped. So I haven't seen any of... I, I've been up and down a few ladders, <laughs> but I haven't seen any shortcut ladders yet. Um, hold down R2. You can charge up for heavy attack, or you can tap it for a heavy attack. Um, and oh, this is a nice mechanic. On the left there, you see I just drop down. Um, <clears throat> if I hold down square now, it's saying X for PC input, but on PlayStation. If I hold down square... On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see that um, white bar. Check this out. That's the durability of the weapon. It's basically the weapon sharpness. And you can sharpen it on your aesthetic. But I don't see the point of that. Because from what I understand, and maybe this will be different in the full game, you can just do that indefinitely. You can just keep doing it. There's no limit to that. It's not a consumable item. You can just keep going. So what's the point? Just take it out. If it's not going to add bit of drama it's not, if it's not going to add a bit of strategy to the game why include something like that it's just a gimmick <clears throat> so maybe in the full game that that will be serious all right so th this guy these guys are one of the hardest enemies i fought um i fought them a few times um later on in the demo and they are so hard like they're really hard to find a window to hit and things like that and like, maybe it's just me not getting good and not really not being good enough but um slow and steady wins the race really um you know, don't be greedy. We know that from some from software games. Um, and as you can see now, top left, I believe that's it's called Fable. That's my power up to do my power attacks. So what I can actually do, if you look down in the bottom right, I can use the hilt of my sword to power the sword up. So it'll increase the sword's attack power for a limited amount of time. But if you look to the just to the left, the saber is still greyed out because you need a full three bars to use that skill, whatever it is. So what I might do is I might just um, get aim to get the bars up so I can show you what that skill is. <clears throat> the the hilt skill that I can use now by pushing block and triangle is just um, to power the sword up. So it's just buffing it's just buffing my weapon basically. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see, it, this feels really flat and empty. Like, I don't really feel like I'm fighting anything. There's no real sound. Sound effects don't really seem to kick in. He's not making any noise. I know the enemies are puppets, so maybe that's what it's all about, but it just doesn't feel meaty, and a lot of my attacks don't feel like they connect. It doesn't feel... It just doesn't feel refined. And maybe that's just a demo thing. Maybe that's just a demo thing. I don't know. I don't want to sit here mouthing off about 
clearly a lot of hard work that's gone into this game. And I love the concept of the game. <clears throat> so I love this idea of it being based on Pinocchio. Pinocchio's a really dark story. Like, it's one of those old school, last century um, sort of stories and, and characters that you wouldn't really have in kids' stuff anymore because it would be considered PC or too dark. <laughs> um, so I kind of, I love that concept. Um, but, yeah, it just, it just doesn't quite feel it because... Again, on paper, the idea of, like, puppets coming to life and the idea of Geppetto being a puppet master and aut automation, humans and puppets, it it's, it's perfect. Like, it sounds amazing, but I'm, I'm just not sure I'm buying it at the moment. Um, I'm, I, it's, it's more I'm just not feeling it. Maybe it's the character design or something. Maybe I'm just not 100% on that. Um, but that's, that double spin attack is the one that I later cheese him with. There's a really hard version of this guy later on, and he drops his baton. Drops his baton as a weapon. That's pretty good. Um, but he killed me quite a few times. So there you go. Not bad. <clears throat> Again, there must have been a cooler way of fight fighting that guy. Maybe some perfect guards and some parries and reposts. Maybe just some some blocking. I mean, you can block with your weapon and take chip damage. But it's a, it's a dangerous tactic if you're not doing it perfectly. And it is hard to do it perfectly. Like like parrying is in um, from software games. Um, cool. So... Um, the first time I played this, I, I just got completely lost. I had no idea where to go after killing that guy. Uh, he does drop a ring. So if we, we can have a little look at the menu now. So um, nothing in the amulet socks yet. If I go down here, defensive parts. So it's just a f physical damage reduction rate, essentially. And this one is 4.25 more physical damage reduction, but it's also 1.8 in weight. But I think we're, we're looking pretty bare at the moment. I don't think we need to worry about weight for now. Uh, right, we'll sharpen the weapon up then. Right, so as you can see, on the left-hand side now, where I've just switched to the healing item, there's like a there's like a filled bar in it, so about two-thirds up the icon. A few more hits, um, and that would um, that would replenish back to one. Heal. So there's a bit of a risk and reward thing, and if you you get good and uh, you know enemies, you can sort of trade off, I guess. Um, so this is really interesting. So I was expecting very Victorian London, right? But this to me is Arkham City. Like this is, this feels very American, um, very Arkham City, which isn't a bad thing. So, you know, quite exciting to come out here. But again, at the moment, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about exploring this world, you know? I mean, it's no Yarnum. And one thing I just want to mention this early on, okay? This is called a Stargazer. We know what this is. It's a bonfire. It's a fight of grace. It's a lantern. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> now, she talks about um, that the stargazer strength doesn't last forever, so be careful with it. Now, I'm still not 100% sure on this, but as you can imagine, if any of you are Souls gamers, which I'm sure you all are, <laughs> um, ergo consumable item here, you know, do that, I get a bit of XP. Ergo is your um, experience. Er ergo is your souls. Top right there, that blue, that blue number at the top right. So obviously you click on this, you can you can level up, right? Yes. And you have your storage there for now. And as we go through the game, we imagine more options. As more mechanics are uh, given to us, more options are going to appear here. Let me just say this about the demo, okay? She mentioned something about the power of this not lasting very long. What she means is, and it's this was so frustrating to me at like midnight last night. I'm going to level up, right? I know that my weapon currently has C scaling with motivity and technique, yeah? see it up there in the middle so i'm gonna go one point in each and i'm gonna get that vitality up one as well yeah that's nice numbers 10 10 10 right i hit level up okay now come back click on this it says level up again this is a temporary way of leveling up that is not how you level up in the game you don't use stargazers from what i understand to level up and I had 12,000 ergo on me at midnight last night. I'm telling you now, guys, it was, it was driving me insane. Because I couldn't level up anymore. Every stargazer I went to didn't have the option. And it's because you don't use them to level up. When you get to Hotel Krat, which is essentially, like I said, the hub, hub the hub area, is a woman with blue hair, essentially a, a firelink maiden. She's a, essentially a maiden in black, right? Firekeeper. You level up with her. Now, I don't know if I just glanced over the 
um, tutorial for that. Or maybe I just didn't read her dialogue enough. But guys, I spent an hour running around not being able to level, level up. Convinced it was a bug in the demo. Or a PC bug. Oh my god, it was just hell. So let me save you some heartache there and some pain. And, oh god. Um, oh, touche, old boy. Touche, you got me. I'll give you that, mate. Fair play. They come. Whoa, there's a load of you guys. It, you know, it, it can feel quite good if you um, charge up a nice R2 and you're at the distance, but then it doesn't feel good if you, <laughs> if you get it wrong. <laughs> um, as you can see, we can spoil around, and that's going to be our shortcut gate for later. So, again, the game has started growing on me, and, and where I'm sort of positioning it for now is... <clears throat> Is there going to be a point with Elden Ring? I mean, I've got the Convergence mod for Elden Ring, and I've got the uh, Garden of Eyes mod as well. So I've got plenty to be having fun with playing on Elden Ring. But maybe from now until the DLC actually comes out, maybe this... I'm not sure when this is released. I wonder if it's strategically positioned to be out soon or way before um, the Elden Ring DLC. But if this does come out in the gap between us being exor Elden Ring exhausted and waiting for the DLC. This could be something worth picking up. But again, I'm I'm not 100% convinced yet because I'm just... What I've tried to do is I've tried to play it a few times just so I can... just so I can get into the, the sort of thing and forget the From Software mechanics, forget what Demon Souls feels like, forget what Elden Ring feels like, forget what Bloodborne feels like. Um, just so this I can let this game stand alone and be fair. Um, and it's just that thing of it not being quite refined. So look, right? I've got three bars of Fable now, and it just gave me the tutorial for Fable. So let's let's try our big attack. Nice. I mean, I really would have wanted it to have done more damage. <laughs> um, but these guys are quite tough. So I'm going to quickly try... Probably shouldn't be doing this in combat, should I? That was not good. That was a waste. So you can't really backstab the big guys, from what I understand. But you can make them groggy. Now, this might happen. Groggy seems to be like a thing of staggering them. Um, and when it does, it opens you up for a critical hit. See there? I made him groggy. Believe the words. Yeah, see? Fatal attack. Face a groggy enemy. Push R1. <laughs> uh, groggy. Very interesting word. I should have to look it up. I thought groggy meant when you feel a bit under the weather. You feel a bit ill. You know, you're not feeling very well. Um, I mean, it didn't look like he was feeling well. Old puppet boy there. <laughs> So that's where we're going, Hedgecraft. And that is really cool. This, that, I love that. There's a very Yarnum feel like that from Bloodborne. Also makes me think a bit about um, the mausoleum at the start of Demon Souls in the Gates of Volataria. So, I mean, th there's inspiration. And again, I, I, I refuse to go too, too far to say that it's derivative. I think that would be really unfair. Um, but yeah, I'm just wondering about how the, how the truly I feel about the combat. And it, like, does it feel like it's sticking? Um, you know, there's definitely a nice timed element to how you dodge and things like that. It's definitely a timing thing, and it's definitely a, a punishment for um, panic dodging, um, which again is quite nice. I'm going to use my last heal just because we are trying to get the shortcut, so we're going to be um, using the stargazer in a minute anyway. Dog fell over. That's oh, that was like quite brutal. And of course, all these enemies are sort of automated. They're all kind of like a mix, like that. They're fully automated, sort of. I don't want to use the word robot. They're, they're puppets, right? So that is kind of cool. But again, it can add it can add to them feeling a bit unrefined and unpolished when you're fighting them. You know, you know, a puppet that's come to life would feel like that. You know, if we're going to talk realistically. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think it does. The character does. Oh, no, character design is the wrong thing. Maybe just the animations, maybe just that feel of move, motion. It just doesn't seem to do it many favors. Um, but I'd be really, really interested to know what your opinions are because, again, like you could be coming into this game not having any bias from 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 software, uh, which would be very interesting. I'd very much like to hear that. But um, for me, it's it's tough not to compare them. But like I say again, I love the concept. I just love the concept of um, Pinocchio. I just love it. Right, so there's a boss up here. We got to the boss. That's that we're doing pretty well. I would say the game was quite 
challenging when I first picked it up, but then I started to sort of understanding the mechanics a bit more. I stopped trying to play it like Elden Ring, and then I went into Bloodborne mode, but then I stopped trying to play it like Bloodborne. <laughs> um, I just tried to consider it as a unique game, you know, <clears throat> timings and <clears throat> positioning and spacing and baiting enemies. It's all contained within this game in its own right. It's not necessarily rip-off. So what I remember, right, we can now run to the boss. But what I'm going to do, we could look at a cheeky, cheeky few levels. I think I probably picked up some dim ergo fragments. What's it? There you go. So <clears throat> dim ergo fragments, clear ergo fragments. So as you see, that's just giving you more currency. It's just giving you souls, basically. It's giving you more ergo. Let's, let's be fair. <laughs> Again, I'm trying not to compare this too much to Dark Souls, calling everything souls. But then to be fair, I do that with Elden Ring. I call um, runes in Elden Ring. Uh, souls so we, i think we should level up if we if we've got two points i'd like to level up mot motivity and technique simply because i want to do a bit more damage the, the boss the first boss is quite difficult um he is quite tough but what i also would, would wouldn't mind doing what i think we should do now let's equip let's equip oh i forgot we respawned the area Man, you were keen. One one cool thing as well is that, like letting that enemy hit you enough. I noticed that the candlestick weapon he has breaks. So, like it was like the more he was hitting me, the more it was chipping away until the whole thing had snapped off and he was just left with the stump of a stick. That was like really cool. Um, I, I did really like that. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna in upper belt. I'm gonna pop that thermite charge in there. That's essentially a fire pot. Um, what I w wouldn't mind us doing. 169. I wouldn't mind getting a few more for the boss. So what I'm going to do is, just before we go to the boss, I'm just going to quickly uh, clean house. I'm glad I've leveled up the stats I have, because I can feel already that the weapon is quite... Um, oh, you little... Doesn't matter, we're going to be we're going to be using the Stargazer again anyway. <clears throat> Sorry, yeah, yeah, I was just saying that, um, I, you know, it's nice when you, if you feel the weapon get a bit stronger. And there's a merchant in a minute that we're going to see where I'm going to buy a couple of, like, thunder pots from him, electric pots, just to throw at the boss. Um, he also sells you then. Love it. Classic. That was a good Promsoft. That was a good Promsoft. Touche, old boy. Touche. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm between trolls of thought here. Um, You can buy the other star. So at the beginning there, it was kind of like a, Ch a Charmeleon, Squirtle, Bulbasaur sort of choose your starter Pokemon. Um, and obviously you're going to get the weapon based on the class. Uh, did I go up here on my first run through? I don't think I did. Yeah, there's items up here, look. So you, you can buy those items from the merchant. And they don't cost a lot. They cost like 300 Ergo. So it's not like it's not really expensive. So if you do think, oh, hold on, I'm not liking this balance style... Um, I want to go, I think I want to go um, heavy or advanced, whatever the other two were. The other, well, the other one's a strength build, basically, and I think the other one's more just like a dex, dex build. Um, yeah, it's just, just tapping the dodge button will do the back step as well when you're not playing around with your, um, your directional stick, so that's pretty cool when you're not moving. Um, right, let's, let's heal up, and what we'll do is we'll run past the enemies. What we don't want to do... We've got full Fable, so our three bars of Fable are full, so we've got a nice power attack to hit the boss with. Um, and we've got some pots to throw at him as well, which is quite nice. So, let's have a little look. Uh, yeah, best just to run through, I think. <clears throat> Powerful Parade Puppet is blocking the entrance, and that's the only way in. Oh, so there's a boss before we get to it. Yeah, classic. This dude here, these... these um, these test dummies, they appear in the hotel to practice on as well. But I've stood here for ages trying to fight it. And it's health just replenishing, I didn't even notice. So this is this is our wandering merchant, and as you can see, if we talk to him again... Yeah, it's, it's even taking the typical dialogue thing of like having to speak to NPCs more than once to get the, the prompts that you want. Um, pretty cool. So this will just... This will this is just a buff for our... Um, our weapon. I got a funny feeling that, that maybe the uh, parade guy boss, this big boss, is going to be as weak against this electric. That's why it's giving us the options of these. I'm going to buy two of those. 
and then I'm going to buy one of those. Okay. Now then, we'll put the thermite charge. Sorry, it's not thermite, is it? We'll put the electric blitz. No, no, no. We'll put we'll, the pots go there. Pots with heals, and buffs with buffs. So where where I sharpen the weapon, I'll, I'll put that in there. That that there is Gemini or Jiminy, the Jiminy Cricket, and it, and it's just the um, tool on my belt. I believe lights up areas. There you go. Just adds. It's just a lantern basically. Okay, cool. Coolio. So introducing the parade puppet. So it, this is really interesting. It gives you information about the, the boss you're about to fight, but it's like really sinister. It, it sort of does it from a point of view of like this is a product. So the parade master has the following functions. 16 jolly songs, cheerful laughter, and 54 parade phrases. <laughs> parade dances to delight children. Strength to carry six men on his shoulders. I mean, it, it, you can read that as being quite sinister stuff, right? This parade master was a uh, was made big in commemoration of the grand exhibition. Check out his charms on the E upcoming exhibition. So, it, not a lot was given away there, but some info about our boss, I suppose. I was concerned that I wasn't fully um, sharpened. Let's do it. Right, I, I've died on this boss a lot, and I continue to die as well. I haven't really got him down. Again, I'm not entirely sure I've got the combat down, guys, so I'm going to leave that up to your judgment. So, nice little cutscene. Yeah, you know, the, the game looks decent. You know, it's not going to win any graphic awards, I guess, but, like, um, I'm guessing it's across uh, last-gen consoles as well, but it, it's, it, it's all right. It's all right. I think, we, for me, it, it just gives me that feeling of concern is, is just it just a, like i say there's the unrefined not quite polished nature of it i'm usually quite good against this guy but i think i've already forgotten how to fight him it's usually just i'm just baiting attacks and then just going in and then getting out and like my advice as well like any forms just try not to panic dodge like the timings are a little bit um, cheeky. Uh, and I, that's exactly what I did then. As soon as I see him move, I'm dodging. And you shouldn't. You just got to wait for the attack. Just did it then as well. <laughs> I will one day take my own advice, guys. I promise. The first phase is just pretty simple. It is just all this kind of stuff. And again, it doesn't feel like... It could just be the way that I'm playing. Maybe because I'm not utilizing getting in behind him. And I'm not utilizing um, perfect guards and stuff. Maybe the game's just feeling a bit unrefined because of that, but it doesn't really feel like an exciting boss. Um, wow, there I didn't even need to dodge. I could just walk backwards. So definitely, definitely a thing of um, learning bosses' attacks and where you stand and stuff like that and whether you do need to roll or dodge or not. I tend to try and get him into the second phase without using anything. I've already used a heal, though, which is annoying. So I didn't need to do two um, dodges there. I could have just done one at the end. So yeah, it really is just all about timing. Um, and I'm not risking any charged heavies because I feel like they just leave me open. I'm going to do one now. Because that's the place to do a charged heavy. He's going to go down. So this is second phase now. So I'm not going to attack him during the animations. I think I noticed his, his health being... His defense being a lot stronger or higher during is it the animation i find the second phase it's better to stay close to him but now i'm just going to try exhausting everything again just timing those attacks uh, those dodges sorry and i'm going to go for my big attack now that actually staggered him that was pretty cool we need to heal because we've got him close now. So, again, just a, a, a well-timed onslaught um, and you're dead. Well-timed onslaught and you can see the enemy with very little health. So, you can't dodge the red attacks. That's what I've been learning. Oh, this is terrible. I think I'm going to die. Quite all the way down there, I'm going to die. Oh, wow. I'm dead. Oh, that's a shame. I thought I was going to get him first time for you. Sorry, guys. 
Oh, look at this hell. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, that's such a shame. I thought I thought I was going to have him. I thought I was going to have him. I think I think what happened there is I just got really um just got really um hesitant. And you know you know how it is, guys. Sekiro hesitation is defeat, right? Um yeah, just that second just that second um phase just threw me a bit there. I think I just panicked a bit. Um it, it looked silly that I was staying close to him, but I have found that staying close to him does help in the second phase. Um, I'm just going to run straight back. Now, that tutorial tip that popped up is a pretty cool one. Um, your ergo, your experience points, they're not in the boss room. They'll land just outside. And that's that's a nice touch. That just gives you that ability to say, well, you know what? I'm not ready for this. I haven't lost any progress. I'll come back later, you know. Um, so I think that's a nice way to keep people going. But again, then, it's not this, you know, it's use that kind of... Um, that punishing feeling of a of a souls like. Okay, only the second one hit him because I wasn't quite close enough to him. Oh, I can't believe I died, guys. Sorry. So we're going in without our consumables this time, and we've got to charge up our special attacks. This is going to be interesting. Okay, that was just chip damage. That's not the end of the world. Oh, that was that he connected there. Okay, I didn't get the charger, but it was a heavy attack, so that's better than nothing. Just got to figure out that second phase, really, haven't we? Not quite getting my space and baiting right here. That was good. I think when he goes down like that, if you charge up an R2 attack, try and hit the hand to the right as well. Essentially his left hand, but to our right as we face him. Because it manages to hit the hand and the head. I'm being cheeky now. I'm trying to go for R2s. I'm trying to go for heavier attacks. Didn't get the charge, but it was a heavy attack, so it's not the end of the oh. He's got beans, this old boy. I'll give him that. Oh, that was brave. That was silly, actually. <laughs> that wasn't brave. It was stupid. I staggered him as he pulled it out. That was good. I'm really not understanding the second phase. He seems... I, I don't get it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Stay close and just attack. Oh, now we're in trouble. I haven't got any stamina. Okay, that's not working. Sorry, guys. I've just completely forgotten how to fight him. Yeah, he's, he's absolutely hammering me. Weird. Strange, very strange. This. Um, I don't seem to be making any good progress against him. This is a shame. I mean, I can see the the ability to for the attack to go over my head. Just blocking that because I've got no other recourse really. We've almost got enough for a power attack. Maybe that'll help us out. Again, we get him very close, but I don't seem to be able to get that last bit of health off him. I think I just need to be confident in getting close. Oh, almost had him again. He's got me again.
I don't see. I just don't seem to be able to get that last little bit of um, help. I, I don't understand the second phase. Basically, I'm not really sure. I can see the attacks going over my head. So I can see. I can definitely see some punish windows. But again, I'm just. Uh, I think maybe I haven't. Some enemies become red and use a strong tackle fury. You can't dodge or guard for your attacks, but you can counter it. Oh, okay, okay. So there you go. Okay, guys, there we go. We're supposed to counter. So those fury attacks. They're the same as in Wulong Dynasty, if you've played that. They're essentially scary attacks that absolutely devastate us. But if we're willing to time a guard right, I think we probably end up massively turning the tables on those. Interesting. I mean, to be fair, he doesn't often do it, and that's not really what's killing me. I mean, he did hit me with it then, and it put my health... Well, I just said that's not what's killing me. That is exactly what he just killed me with. But um, that's interesting. That's interesting to check out, that is. Ah, see, I was w there it was, but I was way too panicked to even try and think about dodging that. See, sometimes his attacks just miss, even though I'm right underneath him. Yeah. That one didn't. Just got out of that one. I'm not sure I've got the timing on that. I don't feel confident. Ah, I dodged then. That's weird. I think not spamming attacks is like... I don't think I'm ever going to be able to... Um, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to perfect parry this. I'm just way too frightened of them. <laughs> yeah, that's never going to happen. I, I'm w playing worse games because I'm trying to practice those um, red attacks. That's the thing as well, this game will punish you. If you try to do combos against enemies, the game will punish you. I mean, did I perfect parry that? Don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay up close to see what I can get away with, really. Not a lot. Oh, definitely dead again. It's interesting, like, I can definitely take a battering from this guy. Again, with that one, never, never dodge backwards was that attack. Always go in. But it's mad to think how close I was to, um, to beating him that first go. But I, I, I don't think we would have learned anything if I'd have done that. I think we've learned a bit more now. I, I, you know, can we perfect parry those attacks? What I'm trying to get my head around is I haven't put any points in for vitality, which I did do last time. I had two extra points. I'm struggling with the lack of stamina. The left arm of steel, right? That, if you look down the bottom left, that has its own like um, energy bar, but it doesn't do anything at the moment. It just, it just like punches. It's just like a power punch, which I wasn't really seeing the benefit of. Maybe it's good for staggering enemies. But again, it's a bit of a commitment. You've got to charge it up. You, you know, you, you hold it down. And <clears throat> I just wonder if it's not much of a charge, let's be honest. I'm sure I can just tap L2 as well. <laughs> That's a nice touch that it keeps your experience points outside the fight. I do appreciate that. Shouldn't be getting hit there, really, should I? Or there. So I blocked that, but it didn't actually give me... Oh! Hold on, I think I figured it out. I think blocking the... Oh no, I think that's just... I'm wondering if blocking a perfect block increases your fable. What do you think? Maybe it's how you get your fable bar up. Way too early there. I think it does! Okay, so perfect blocks really increase your fable. So then, you know, that gives us risk and reward for getting our power attack. Oh, why did I dodge there? I was supposed to just block. I think I've learned that combo now. Oh, oh check my health. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's really cool. The... 
perfect guard is massively increasing our fable. So that's what you want to be doing, essentially. I, 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 thought, I thought the game was just very odd in regards to me doing chip damage to bosses. Like, I've leveled up quite a few times. You'd expect to be doing a bit more damage against a first boss, but I think that's what it is. I, I don't really think it's about chipping away with R1. I think it's about playing strategically and skillfully. I think what you have to do is you've got to get those perfect guards in, see them as opportunities, not obstacles, and then see that Fable Bar increase. Because I didn't realise the Fable was depleting every time I went, every time I died. That does make sense. I wonder if I get some back when I pick this up. Ah, okay. So when you recover your lost Ur, you're getting your Fable back. But I'm sure the perfect guards were really adding to those bars. Nice. Let's just try more perfect guards. Because it's not just the red item, the red attacks that you can guard against perfectly. Ah, no, okay. Maybe I'm not doing it right, but I'm definitely not seeing that bar go up. So ignore what I'm saying about the bar going up. trying to understand the combos of the second phase and I really haven't gotten down. He just trashes me. Oh, nice. That was a freebie. So he went groggy. It's not going to kill him. It's going to help. Getting him this time. That shouldn't have hit me. Neither should that. I'm so sorry, guys. I just, I just can't kill him. I can't kill him. On, on every time, it's the last thing. Just, just can't beat him. So weird. I feel like I learned a bit more about that fight, though. He, he got into his second phase quite quickly there. I think he was being a bit more confident. I think blocking... Maybe that's the that's the, the, um, the assumption I made, which just screwed me over a little bit. It was like, hey, this is Bloodborne. So this is Bloodborne. It's all about dodging. You don't block in, in Bloodborne. But I think the mechanic for those perfect guards is definitely a thing. Um, I think what it was, the reason why I thought the perfect guards were... Maybe they are. Maybe I just didn't do any perfect guards in that fight. We'll have to see. Um, I just don't. I just don't understand this second phase. It's too erratic. I can't see the attacks. I'm starting to understand the first phase a bit. Um, I'm just not seeing the second phase. And I think when I see his health get low, I'm getting really nervous and I'm hesitating, and that's why he's killing me. I'm just. I'm just it's. It's. It's not just that. It's also because I'm running out of heals and stuff, and I can't. Can't really take too much of the, the risk anymore. See, was that a perfect guard? I'm not sure. My health seems all right. I've been really lucky with this. He's he's supposed to have hit me quite a few times, and he's missed. I let him go into his second phase, but I also want to be up close to him. Right, he's groggy. There it is. Okay. Okay, let him recover and then go. But I didn't let him recover there, did I? Whoa, so, so look how different this fight is. This is so weird. This is so strange now. I'm doing so much better. Jinx it. <laughs> I thought I had a block on that. So yeah, um, trying to dodge backwards against that attack is ruining me. It's absolutely ruining me, guys. How strange. With 
with the heal left over. It is. Parade, parade leaders ergo. So I guess... Didn't get a chance to read what the quartz was. I guess the parade leaders ergo is essentially... Um, yeah, get 5,000 ergo. Although the entire audience disappeared in a pool of blood, the parade mass was cheerful. As long as there was the thing, the show must go on. A treasure hunter may want this rear ergo. Ah, there you go. So don't, don't consume it. Um, again, just that's typical ROM software. So keep the boss souls, I suppose it is. Keep the boss ergo. That was really interesting, that fight. I'm starting to understand the combat a bit more now and seeing how that ch it changed together. That was pretty cool. Blocking, understanding the enemy's moves, stamina management. Getting the hits in, just building up that blue bar, going for the pallets, and going for the grogginess. I think <laughs> to make an enemy groggy, um, it's those successive hits. It's about basically breaking their stamina, I suppose. Um, cool, okay. Not too bad. I mean, that's the most I've ever died on that boss. But I, I quite like the fact that I was learning. I, I've come away from that fight now thinking, wow, okay. I think I get this game a bit more now. And despite dying like four times, it's like sort of weirdly grown on me more. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, because I felt like I learned something. I felt like I'm a bit better equipped now, a bit more confident for other other encounters. Right, so we're supposed to be going in there, right? Oh, look, you have to lie to get inside. You're a special puppet after all. Wow, so that's really playing on the Pinocchio thing. If my character's nose grows longer when I lie, that's going to be hilarious. <laughs> um, okay. So I have to lie to get in. So, okay, maybe they're going to ask me a question to go in and I'm going to have to figure that out. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what happens is... My memory's terrible. They ask you a question and you just you, you essentially have to lie. And you have to lie. So, here we go. Knock on the door. Welcome to the of the Grand <laughs> a luxury hotel with a really, really ominous, scary-sounding defense system. Step out of line and we shoot you in the head. So you say you're a human, which we're not. We're a puppet, right? We lie. Grand Covenant's fourth door. A puppet cannot lie. So there's obviously something about us. Like the voice just said to us, we're a special type of puppet. We can somehow lie. So again, you know, I wonder somehow if maybe the, the um, twist is that we're not actually strictly a puppet. We're a human and a puppet. But there you go, guys. Into Hotel Krat. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to tease you, and I'm going to leave this episode there. Don't worry. The next episode's coming. There you have it, guys. The start of Lies of P. And I'm at six, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 for now. Like, that number can change. Can change. Cheers, guys. Let me know in the comments what you're finding out about... about let me know in the comments what you're finding out about the game. I want to know everything. What do you think of it? Uh, what have I been doing wrong? Let me know. And episode two is coming soon. Bye.